Have you ever had trouble focusing on a subject or an object in dense fog, a mist, smoke, or perhaps a heavy snowfall or rainfall? Well, this appears to be a bigger problem than we first thought, as Ken has been working hard to find a solution to this problem. In Canon Patent Filing JP 2024-054762, filed on October the 5th, 2022, and published April the 17th, 2024, Canon claims to solve the following problem. To provide an image processing apparatus, an imaging apparatus, a control method, and a program for improving image visibility of a subject in a visible light image. Once again, the machine translated Japanese legalese engineering speak, well, it leaves an awful lot to be desired. However, if we dig a little deeper into the scope of claims of the patent, it starts to make just a little bit more sense. Canon's come up with an image correction technique in which a visible light image obtained by photographing a scene filled with an aerosol, such as a fog or smoke, is sharpened by measuring the distance to the subject, the aerial intensity, and the sunlight brightness. Okay, still a little foggy, excuse the pun. Well, perhaps this will help. The image processor enhances the visibility of the subject by combining a standard RGB image and an infrared image of each frame constituting a moving image. So to simply sum up, what Canon solved here is the ability to lock focus on to a subject or an object if that subject or object is in um, a dense fog or um, it's perhaps raining heavy, snowing, there's mist or there's a forest fire. It's able to lock onto the subject or object and not only take photos, but also videos as well. So how has Canon gone about doing this? Well, it involves software and hardware. There's a new image sensor, a new image processor, and of course the firmware or software that controls and how that, how that works. And it's all done in camera. But the real big change here is to the image sensor. It's not your standard bare RGB sensor. A standard bare RGB sensor has two green, one blue and one red pixel for every photo site. This new sensor replaces one of those green pixels for an infrared sensitive pixel. That converts the infrared light into an electrical signal. I know what you're thinking, Brian. There's no way that Canon is going to bring out this new design sensor for the Canon EOS R5 Mark II or the Canon EOS R1. And Brian, I think you're right. I really don't think this makes sense to be putting it out in the Canon EOS R5 Mark II or even the Canon EOS R1. And I know what you're thinking. Yes, Canon has designed special astro sensors for certain cameras, but we don't really see an awful lot of those being in play this, well, in 2024. And while there is a demand for some using it in astro, I think the marketplace for cameras such as the R5 or the R1 to be able to lock on to a subject in, well, let's say marine conditions, because if you're by the ocean, you see a lot of fog, a lot of mist, and you get a lot of heavy rain and snow. So this would make an awful lot of sense. But where I see this playing a much better benefit, again, looking at those marine environments, thinking of the dockyards um, where we've seen a lot of cars stolen and other goods that you really want to monitor, surveil the area. Uh, so security cameras would definitely benefit from this technology. We don't have to worry about um, an RGGB sensor. We could lose one of those greens and by having infrared, because the whole purpose of surveillance or security cameras is actually to be able to not grab footage of the entire area, but to actually be able to lock onto the subject that could potentially be breaking into something and you want to actually lock onto the face. This is where facial detection, this is where locking on getting a really good image of the subject makes a huge difference. It can mean the difference between having a lead to solve a case to not solving a case. So security cameras and surveillance cameras, it definitely makes an awful lot of sense, but there's another potential option here. This could be one of those things that Canon came up with as something to, well, for future proofing, for coming up with something later. It was of interest enough for Canon to research and develop this, but it could just end up sitting on a shelf. I can't see this coming out for the Canon EOS R5 Mark II or the Canon EOS R1. And while a good point can be made that Canon could come out with a sensor that would be an option for the R5 Mark II or the EOS R1 for certain situations, but you'd have to, Kind of ask yourself the very simple question would there be enough call 
for them to not only do the research and development, which they've done because we have a patent application, but to also fabricate a sensor. And then what would it cost to be able to charge you to have that R5 equipped with that sensor? And where would it come in handy? It's, I could see it benefit sports, uh, outdoor winter Olympic sports, for example, with an awful lot of snow. Um, but then again, if the snow is really heavy, they might cancel the event. And if the rain's really heavy, well, they're probably going to cancel the event as well. I'm kind of at a loss here as to any sort of business case or use case scenario that would make sense to see this in the EOS R5 Mark II, let alone the EOS R1. I just don't really see this happening. But when I saw this patent application, I thought, oh, this one's interesting. I really like the idea of this to have three of the pixels doing RGB and the other one cap for it, uh, taking that light coming in and converting that infrared light, part of the visible light spectrum or well, the electromagnetic spectrum, and converting that into an electronic signal or pixel signal. And I thought that's pretty interesting. And the funny thing was, is un it wasn't until that I actually recorded this that I noticed that Canon Rumors had also put out a patent application on this this morning. Um, I, whenever they come out with a story on a patent application, I just usually let it stand because then I can focus on something else. The way I see this is I think if I cover different stories to Canon Rumors than Sony Alpha Rumors, it gives you a little bit more to chew on because there were 18 patent applications that came out published today. And what I like to do is focus on the most interesting ones. You'll notice that there was a few on fisheye, dual fisheye lenses over the past couple of weeks. I skipped those. Um, I, I kind of wanted to do it, but I also realized the marketplace for those types of devices is pretty small. But also I was working on doing a couple of reviews and they take an awful lot of time. So this weekend, I've got a bit more spare time if something interesting comes up. But now I want to turn our attention to deals of the week. This is a new segment that I've started because I quite often hear about really incredible deals after they're over and it always annoys me. So this is my way of, if you're in the marketplace for anything, well, this is my way of capturing some of the most interesting sales that are currently on. The Canon EOS R5 has been on sale for $29.99 for the better part of a month. And while it's still on sale, it'll now set you back $31.99, that's at Adorama and B&H. But the Canon EOS R5C, that one is still at its all record price of $35.99. Now, if rumors are correct, we are supposed to be getting a refresh of the Canon EOS R5 and the R5 Mark II in just about six weeks and a development announcement for the Canon EOS R1. But Canon rumors has said that they're kind of wouldn't be surprised if maybe we get the R5C Mark II at the same time. A couple of sources have come forward. They just don't have anything validated. And maybe this is just some sort of inventory clearing sale. The R5 going back up uh, to $31.99, still on sale, $200 off its new low price. Maybe they've done enough inventory clearing on that camera, but I, if, if you missed out on the sale and you wish you had grabbed it at $29.99, you know, if you wait a little longer, it's going to go back down to $29.99. I just don't know when. Canon doesn't send me any bulletins, bulletins saying, hey, Simon, this is our roadmap for products this year and sales events. So why don't you tell all your customers, your viewers, and all that stuff? They don't. All right, now let's turn our attention to Sony because Sony, for the better part of since 2020, we haven't seen any significant sales on Sony stuff. I mean, like $60 off the A7R5. Um, some sales on lenses, but it's been pretty well nada. But now we're seeing some pretty impressive sales on Sony gear. The Sony A7S III, it's on sale for $300 off. The A7 IV is also on sale. And the A7R5, which was released just about two years ago, it's also on sale. And these are pretty significant sales. So if you're a Sony customer or you want to be a Sony customer, Now's a pretty good time to nab some of these deals just after they gave a couple of firmware updates, although they did have to recall a few of them. But these are these are the best deals I've ever seen on the Sony a7R5, the a7 IV, and the a7S III. In fact, I've never seen a sale on any of these other than the a7R5, which was $60 off a few weeks back. So pretty incredible deals. And if you're interested in purchasing these cameras from Adorama, b and or Amazon.com, then please consider using my affiliate links down below, these guys right here. I've got them in the description as well. If you do use these affiliate links though, um, there is, I do get a small commission of between two and 12% back. 
but by clicking on them, you don't pay any extra. You don't have to put in any sort of code. Basically, it's completely transparent than if you went to the site yourself. The only difference is I get a small commission back, which really does help support this channel. I don't hit you up for Patreon. I don't hit you up for any other fees or anything like that. Um, this is one way that you can help support this channel by buying yourself something. Uh, I wanna offer a big thanks to all of you that have purchased using my affiliate links in the past, especially over the last week. Somebody picked up a Nikkor 800 millimeter F6.3. If I had a Nikon, I, I'm pretty sure I'd buy that lens. On the Canon side, um, well, the 800 millimeter F5.3, what is it, 5.3? I'm just have I just had a mental block. It's it's have you ever had this? Like you've completely forgotten the name of somebody you've known for 20 years. This lens, I've all I, I, it's almost like the memory's completely gone, but it's that 800 millimeter f5.6. There it is. Um it's it's an awful lot more expensive. I could never afford that. I probably couldn't even afford to insure it. But um yeah, that and also somebody bought a, a Canon EOS R5. So thank you very much. Thank you very much for supporting this channel by commenting, liking, and subscribing. I'm trying to develop this into a channel and a community where you can come in and you can get news about upcoming cameras. We can talk about camera sales, where the market's going, as well as do patent applications, which is what this video is about. I'm always looking at new ways to provide you with, you know, well, the camera news network. And I, I, I look forward to the day when I can do this full time. I do have a day job right now and it pays for the bills mostly. I, I really do hope that within you know, two to five years, I'll be able to retire and this will be the focus of my day. Well, not the complete focus of my day, obviously, but you know where I'm going with this. And so a big thanks to many of you out there supporting me. It's very much appreciated, but have yourself a great day, a great weekend. And of course, we'll see you again soon.